please click the link in the description to watch the Mexican Muslims. This video has subtitles in many different languages. I definitely had a good day with the Muslims in San Cristobal de las Casas for the Eid celebration. They were very welcoming, they were very nice. So in this section of the video, I want to talk about how Islam came to San Cristobal, how these indigenous people became Muslim. But just a little bit before I get into that exact history, I just want to talk about San Cristobal de las Casas. So the city is named after two people, the first being Saint Christopher and the second being Bartolome de las Casas. Bartolome de las Casas was a Spanish landowner in the 16th century. He was also a priest and a bishop, a social reformer as well. And he was the first officially appointed protector of the Indians. That's his, basically his nickname, when, what he's known for. But within that part is he was an advocate for bringing African slaves and increasing slavery here in Mexico. So that's how the city got its name. One of the most important things I would like to say is that indigenous people, the Mayans, were not allowed to enter the city limits of San Cristobal de las Casas. The mestizos, the whites, forbid any indigenous people from entering the city unless to work menial jobs and to work as help and labor in the city. So in the 1960s and 1970s, the Catholic Church was losing a lot of indigenous members to evangelicals, the Protestants, and just the various forms of Christian denominations. So to combat this, a bishop from Chiapas named Samuel Ruiz gets all of these Indian communities, all of these Indian tribes, the Setsels, Totsels, and many others together, as many as 327 communities, and to form an Indian Congress, an Indian group. This Congress was the first of its kind, and the goal of it was to unite all of the indigenous people politically. So something you guys might be wondering is, why are these indigenous people, why are these Mayans going away from the Catholic religion and becoming evangelicals, the different denominations of Christian groups, other religions such as Buddhism, and in this video, Islam. The reason is national traumas, colonial rule, and the destruction of Indian people by the Spanish conquistadors, the Catholics. With many centuries of discrimination and segregation dating back all the way to the 16th century, this has made it easier for tribes such as the Sotzels and other indigenous groups to easily be converted by the Christian missionaries and now the Muslim missionaries. So this organization formed by Samuel Ruiz forms the foundation of the EZLN, which is also known as the Zapatista movement. So one of the goals of the Zapatista movement was to increase communal land, also known as ejidos. So just so you know, there's a lot of land in Mexico ever since the Mexican Revolution there has become a lot of communal land because before you just had a few people that own everything. So now you have all of these indigenous people that are still Catholic, but are only listening to Samuel Ruiz. So there becomes a new type of Catholic, one that mixes the traditional Catholic religion with the new Mayan culture or the old Mayan culture and the old Mayan way of doing things. And all of these people are now just listening to Samuel Ruiz. And those people who are not indigenous but Catholic, they have their own uh, bishop and their own communities. So there becomes a divide in the Catholic community in Chiapas, one that's indigenous and one that's traditional and mestizo and white. So ever since the Spanish times, the conquistador times, you basically have in Mexico few landowners that own everything, haciendados, and then you have majority of the country, majority of the population, that are just nothing of peasants. So when the Mexican Revolution happened with Emiliano Zapata, one of the things that has changed was ejido, communal land, communal land, uh, more people sharing land and having land, having access to land and taking some of that land away from the one or two people that might control all the land. So in 1992, then president Carlos Salinas pushes legislation that makes it so ejido land could be sold and that it could be made private. And this is what caused the conflict between the indigenous people, also the Zapatistas and the Mexican government. So January, 1994, when NAFTA, North American Free Trade Agreement is supposed to go into effect, where Mexico can trade with Canada 
in the United States. The Zapatistas with their guns raid the city of San Cristobal and many uh, small towns, medium-sized towns in Chiapas in general. So the government sends out the military, a lot of people die, a lot of destruction. The Zapatistas even control a army base, they raid an army base and they free a lot of people from jail. A lot of things happen, you can go look it up on the internet, what happened during the 1994 Zapatistas indigenous people uprisings. So the history of Islam in Chiapas begins in 1994 with the arrival of Spanish missionary Muhammad Nafia. It is a Sufi organization that is known as Murabitun World Movement and has a track record for reaching out to insurgency led places, places that are in conflict. And yes, in 1994, you have the Zapatistas, you have a lot of conflict, a lot of mayhem that's going on in Chiapas. So around this time period, Murabitun World Movement is doing missionary work in Chechnya and East Germany. The Murabitun Movement is founded in the 1970s by Ian Dallas, a Scottish guy that was also a Muslim convert himself. Getting back to missionary Muhammad Nafia, the Spanish missionary that comes from Spain all the way to San Cristobal de las Casas. And from what I read and understand, the story goes like this. So he's gonna offer the Zapatistas, which is the rebel group that's against the government, he's gonna offer them weapons in exchange for them converting to Islam. So as he spends time, he starts to convert people and a community starts to be formed with him as the leader, Muhammad Nafia. But people did not like his authoritarian rule and control. So in the early 2000s, you basically have a group that splits off and forms their own community. And in the video, in the first part of the video, the people that I was with, they were initially part uh, of his group. But as time went on, they are the group that ventured off and formed their own group. They did not like his teachings, his way of doing things, and his, you know, cruel and uh, rude control. So the people that I was spending time with, these are, I guess, what you can say is regular Muslims. So some of the exact reasons why they left Muhammad Nafia, I guess, allegedly, is that the children, they were not allowed to go to public schools. Family members were not allowed to communicate with uh, family members that are not Muslim. They were not allowed to do business with people who are not Muslim. So this extreme level of self-isolation was probably the biggest reason. So I did ask them about girlfriend, circumcision, polygamy, and hajj. So when it comes to girlfriends, they'll tell you up front, we don't have girlfriends, especially the young ones, the ones in their 20s, teens. They're like, hey, this is haram. We don't do this. We're going to get married and that's how we're going to do it. Circumcision, I guess they don't do it at birth. So they do it maybe around the age of uh, seven. And if someone is a convert, they'll do it in their 20s or whenever they convert. And they don't actually do it in San Cristobal. I guess they go to a uh, new or, or a nearby town. Uh, when it comes to Hajj, one, the guy that I spoke to, uh, the, the leader of kind of like the community, uh, Mr. Uh, Yahya, he has went to uh, Mecca, so he's done Hajj. So when I asked them about polygamy, they said no one in this community has more than one wife. Every guy, he just has one wife. So one thing that should be noted about Chiapas is that the indigenous people here tend to change their religion a whole lot more than other parts of Mexico. And the proof of this is that in states like Zacatecas or perhaps in St. Louis Potosi, the Catholic percentage or the number of people who are Catholic is about 90% and higher, 95%. But here in Chiapas, yes, the majority are Catholic, but it's about 62%. So the people here, the indigenous people here, they change their religion pretty often, going from uh, Catholic to Christian to Buddhist. So one of the things that's kind of like unfortunate that I think is that the population here is about four or five, six hundred people in San Cristobal de las Casas. And then in the greater Chapa state, you have about maybe a few thousand people, two, three, four thousand people. So can you imagine with, within this small community of four or five hundred people, you have four different groups. So you have the Sufis that came first. These are the, uh, the Maravotun that basically brought Islam to uh, uh, Chiapas. And then you have the, this group, which, which are Sunnis. They classify themselves as Sunnis. You have Ahmadiyya, you have Ahmadiyya Masjid, 
Ahmadiyyas are basically Muslims who do not believe that Prophet Muhammad is the last prophet. Uh, then you're going to have another group from a, like a Syrian guy that they basically follow the Syrian guy. And on that note, if you enjoyed this video, yes, subscribe, like, share, and I'll see you on the next video. I'm already here in Costa Chica. Uh, I call it the Black Coast, the Black Pacific Coast of Mexico. I have uh, videos about immigration, uh, the migrant situation coming out. I have, uh, I'm working on a video right now about the black Mexicans here on this part of uh, the coast. On that note, thank you for watching. Peace.